Hello there, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Cloud Bytes TV. Um, last week, I was at Dreamforce, and uh, I went to um, some wonderful sessions, got to talk to some fantastic people. If you haven't checked out um, the interviews we've got to do, then please go and check them out afterwards as well. We got to talk to a bunch of wonderful people, uh, so Kerry Townsend, Jody Wagner, Rad Radkova, and Andy Fawcett around what they were doing, um, some of their best bits of Dreamforce, and really talking about what some of their sessions were about as well. And they were uh, four of the best people that I could find there, um, and there were many others that I sadly didn't get to interview. After one of the sessions, um, I was chatting to someone, um, and we were talking, uh, the session was all about uh, dependency injection. It was um, another session on dependency injection. I went to a few. It wasn't Andy's one that I interviewed him about. Um, and after this session, uh, this person I was chatting to was just saying that they were never really sure as to when um, custom setting was correct or some custom metadata was correct. Um, and they weren't really you know, 100% sure on what to use and when. So I thought it'd be a great topic for a quick video. Um, and that's what we're here for today. So I want to start off by giving you a bit of a background as to how custom settings and custom metadata came into the world and really some of the, you know, the typical use cases that I've seen with them. So once upon a time, uh, we had data and it could be sales data. It could be data around um, some courses we were running, for example, um, around rooms they were in. It could be data around particular people. And all of that data was stored in our database in Salesforce. And it was either in a standard object, such as the account or the contact, or a custom object for some of our kind of more bespoke information, such as a course or a room. Now, um, that's all well and good. That works wonderfully for us um, until we start to want to have more complicated apps. So when I first started working with Salesforce, um, you know, I was telling a few people the other week that uh, what is now classic UI that everyone's trying to get rid of um, was actually the new Aloha UI back then. And I first started working with Salesforce on the old UI um, and there were still S controls and things like that. And so, you know, apps back then were a lot simpler and less, um, less difficult to maintain and manage. But as applications grew in size and as they became uh, more powerful and had more business processes in, people started to want to add their own config in there. Um, and that config kind of controls the way that the application runs. And at the time, there wasn't really a way of doing this. So people started to create config custom records. Um, and they would have a name such as config double underscore C. And you would effectively create records that held particular configuration around your system. Um, so a good example that you know I like to use in these situations is um, sales tax. So for those of us who have ever visited the US and are not a US citizen, um, the way that tax is calculated on things in the US completely boggles my mind, at least for uh, me being from the UK. And it's because we're so used to seeing our tax, at least in the UK, just added straight on. I mean, it's a flat rate, one rate of uh, sales tax, VAT, whereas in the US, it is based upon, I believe, the state, the city and the county. Um, and that's obviously not that complicated, but there could be different rates for each city and each county and each state. Um, and so, you know, what you want to do is you want to store all that information in there so that when you're applying your sales tax, you're applying the correct one based upon the state. Now, if you imagine um, how much data that is, that's a lot of data. There's a lot of complexity around that. And so that's where something like the config definitely comes into play. Now, there are a few issues with using custom records in this way. And the first of which is if we go back to our example of the sales tax, it's the amount of data we're storing. Now, all those records, that counts against our data limits, counts against our data storage, and that's not something we want to be using. Um, it's difficult for us to use. It's not great for us to be using it up. Data storage on the platform isn't the cheapest, and so we've got to be careful just eating through that. On top of that, uh, we've then got a query for the config using Sockwall or Sossel, um, and that's just not, not going to help us as we have these more powerful and more you know, kind of complicated apps. Loading up the config and that taking some time before we can even get started running um, is not great for our app's kind of interactivity, its usability, um, and also, you know, puts us at the mercy of hitting some governor limits, which is what we don't want to do. So we've got to be very careful there. And also, if we're storing all this as kind of regular, um, regular data, we've then got to be aware of the sharing implications as well. And as we have more records, the sharing implications become bigger and so on and so forth. 
We also can't package and redeploy it. So, um, you know, if you're building up a package as an ISV for deployment to all your customers, well, you've then got to recreate those records every time. And that's not something that's ideal for you. Um, and similarly, think about if you're a consulting partner. So you have some config that you've tested in a sandbox, you know works, and then you want to deploy that up to production, right? Because you've tested that config already, you know that that works with the system. Well, you can't do that, you've then got to recreate it. And while that's not uh, the biggest problem in the world, um, it's something that you know is at the mercy then of someone making a mistake. Um, and humans are only humans after all, they are fallible, um, and so that could happen. And finally, the biggest thing that uh, I think here is an issue is that we're storing metadata as data. And that's not correct. You know, we shouldn't have our metadata and our data intertwined so closely. They shouldn't be so mixed up together. What we want to do is we want to separate out the data from the metadata so that we can deploy things properly. So how do we do that? Well, Salesforce went away and they were having ISVs and partners tell them they had this problem. And so they came up with custom settings. And there are two main flavors of custom settings. There are lists, which we can see here on the top left, and there are hierarchy, which is just here on the top right. Um, and list custom settings are effectively, think of them as just you know simple records. So there's a few data types that you can store on there in custom fields on a custom setting. You can make many different records, and then you, they each have a unique name. And what you can do is you can reference that unique name to retrieve the right record. Nothing too complicated there. Um, they can't do lookups. They can't do other pieces like that. They're just quite simplistic, so you can't have hierarchies there. Now, a hierarchy custom setting really refers to its position in the sharing hierarchy. Um, and so hierarchy custom settings apply to a particular profile or a particular user. And so they're really good if you have things um, that are very, very sensitive around that. So a, a good example um, I've seen is in a uh, service cloud use case where um, the company was an outsourced call center provider. Um, and what they did is that they had different clients who had different document repositories they wanted to use. And depending upon the client, depending on what document repository you wanted to search. And so you would use a hierarchy custom setting there to allow you to you know, filter out the different um, search provider you're going to use, different document search provider based upon your profile. So you might have one for one client and one for another. That was the way that they fixed that. Now, custom settings are fantastic. Um, they do solve some of our problems, but how do they fare with the four big ones that we had? So first of all, when it comes down to our records, these still count against our data storage limit. And again, that's not great. If we go back to our sales tax example, if we're storing that as a bunch of list custom settings, well, you know, we're very quickly going to, again, still be eating into our data storage. Searchability, however, well, they don't use SQL. So you can just call them, you can use a get instance method, um, and you can get by name as well. And that will retrieve the record for you. They're actually stored in a separate cache. Um, or cache, depending on how you want to pronounce that. Um, and that allows you to retrieve the information and just get it in Apex nice and quickly. And they can also be used in workflow and things as well. Now for packaging, they don't solve that problem for us. Um, they're not deployable. They're still treated kind of like data on that front. So they've got you know, a particular record is uh, a record for that org. You can't redeploy it. So in terms of um, kind of dealing the problem of uh, kind of separating them out, we haven't really got anywhere on that front. At least, however, they are metadata. They are somewhere else within the application. They are stored separately to all the other data we have. So it does make them kind of easier to use on that front. So that's something we got going for us at least. So that was all well and good. Custom settings were around. People started to use them, started to build these more complicated systems with them. But again, the feedback that you know was going to the Salesforce team was not, not that it was solving all the problems in the world, but there were still some issues. So Salesforce went away and did the right thing. They went away and reviewed it from the ground up and they came up with custom metadata. And custom metadata records are completely separate. So whereas with uh, custom settings, you still have the double underscore C appendix. Um, with these, they are underscore MDT and they are stored completely separately. Um, and they're in a different part of the setup menu as well. They are a new type of data for us. And you can do all sorts of things to them. So you can have lookups, so you can have parent-child relationships between metadata records. Um, you can have all sorts of different field types on there and they're really, really versatile. And so 
in terms of the four problems, what they did was they helped solve, first of all, um, you know, in the one around uh, scalability and data storage because they were allowing you to store this data separately. So our data was stored independently. It doesn't count against our data storage. There is a limit of 10 million characters of custom metadata. Um, and that obviously just alludes to the fact that it's mainly text information that you can store in them. Um, but you know, that's a pretty big limit for the org and that's okay. Um, again, in searchability terms, you can retrieve them nice and easily. They're quick for us to use and work with. More importantly, however, is the fact that they can be packaged and deployed between orgs. So if you are packaging as an ISV, you can have your default configuration in there as custom metadata and then deploy that to all your customers, which also means if you make updates and you just need to update the config, you can do so quite nicely and easily. For consultants and for those who own an org, pushing between orgs is nice and simple as well. And then finally, the fact is, clues in the name these are metadata records they're not data records and so the fact that they are stored separately like that means that they really kind of adhere to the best practices and principles so hopefully that gives you a bit of a whirlwind tour as to what the differences are but what about when to use them so first of all for list custom settings i basically recommend you know never look at them and just to use custom metadata instead and this is what salesforce recommend as well if you go into the trailhead modules um you go into the custom metadata trailhead module, you'll learn all about custom metadata, but they'll also tell you, you know, don't go using um, custom settings, list custom settings, migrate them over to custom metadata. For hierarchy custom settings, however, you should use them for those simpler settings that are limited by profile and by user. Um, so, you know, you're not recommended to move these over to custom metadata. There are still some use cases around that kind of uh, scoping by profile or by user where they're useful. Um, but really, for all other instances, custom metadata is the way forward, particularly for those complex configuration settings and any settings that you have that need packaging or deployment. Now, one of the interesting use cases I've seen, so let's go back to that service cloud example where we had the document searches. Well, people uh, I've seen implement a hierarchy custom setting that points to a correct custom metadata record. Um, and so it gives the name of the custom metadata record you should load. So that's, that's another way of doing it as well. So hopefully for the person who was confused about these, hopefully um, this has answered your question and has uh, given you a bit more detail as to what we spoke about uh, when we were there on site together. And hopefully everyone else has found this useful and interesting as well. If you have, please like uh, and subscribe. Leave a little comment below um, about any information, any other questions you might have or anything you found particularly interesting. And if there's anything else you'd like to hear about um, on upcoming episodes, again, please comment below. Uh, and yeah, remember to subscribe so that you can get all the additional information every week as we release these new videos. So thank you very much and I'll catch you all soon.